Good point. Just don't say it on TV. I suspect uh, she and Tom will discuss that. No such sour, sour grapes with these women, though. Chick Bowl is our own Myra Lawrence's annual labor of love, and yesterday she and a few of her fairer football fanatic friends got together over a little big game bonding. Chick Bowl 2012, officially Chick Bowl V. Chick Bowl number five. So five years running, bigger, better, badder, more Madonna, more tassels, more bling than ever before. Well, I think it's great because women traditionally don't celebrate Super Bowl or they go with their boyfriend or their husband and this is all ladies all the time and it's, we don't necessarily watch the whole game but we have a great time and it's a lot of fun. I'm going to go New York and I know that's a bad answer. I think everyone's going for the Patriots but I'm going to go for the blue one. <laughs> Tyson Berry's dream of suiting up for his first NHL game might come true tomorrow. Berry has been tearing up the American Hockey League, leading his team in scoring as a defenseman, and the Colorado Avalanche have taken notice. The offensively challenged Avs gave Tyson the call Saturday, and the 20-year-old could make his big debut tomorrow at home versus the Hawks. He's got 29 points in 46 AHL games so far this season. He had his first practice with the Avs this morning. Ian Hydley at the helm of the Oak Bay Castaway Wanderers, looking to repeat as spring BC champs. A win Saturday versus the UBC Old Boys uh, Ravens would give them second place in the CDI Premier standings. This kick pulled the visitors to within three in the second half. But C-Dub plays opponents extremely hard at Windsor Park, and a couple of game-breaking runs gave them some breathing room. Uh, and, you know, it's always upsetting when a Vancouver team comes all the way to the island only to lose. C-Dub strikes for four second half tries on the way to a 37-19 win. They are now at 3-1 on the season, just ahead of James Bay. As we told you last week, soccer history will be made on February 19th when the Ubik Vikes host the Vancouver Whitecaps at Centennial Stadium. It is the first time ever that a Major League Soccer team will face CIS competition, but it's certainly not the only Victoria connection for this year's Whitecaps. The Caps are in Arizona for training camp, and that's where we find CTV's Jason Perez with a very special guest. Thank you very much, Jordan. You know, the last time I was in Phoenix was with you. You should be down here. Casa Grande, Arizona, home of the Vancouver Whitecaps training camp. And joining me now, the owner of the Whitecaps, the pride of Victoria, Jeff Mallet. Jeff, uh, thanks for doing this for us. And uh, it's great, a second year. Uh, I like it. I, you can just feel the atmosphere stepped up a notch. We call it round two, but it really feels like we've uh, come a long way since, since last year and uh, improved across the club in all spots. New coach, a great new player, and Sebastian Latou. Things are looking good for the club. Yeah, and Martin Rennie really came in, and not only himself, but the staff he put together. He's got a real crisp plan of what he'd like to do. It's coming to fruition, and then you get a last-minute addition like Sebastian. Uh, it's good stuff. Now, they're called the Vancouver Whitecaps. They're really the BC Whitecaps are taking the team to the island this year. University of Victoria Vikings, my old Vikes, 1982 finalists on that one. So going over to see Bruce Wilson and his great program he has over there, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. If memory serves me correct, I'm not sure if you were involved with the team, but the Uvic Vikes did beat the Whitecaps at one point in exhibition. Uh, they they did, and it's 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 a lot of fun. And I think this year, obviously, we're going to bring our big boys over, so I think it'll be a, a good test for the university. But I think it's just great for soccer, especially in Victoria. I'm very excited. You want to see Centennial Stadium packed? I do. Want to see if I know it will be packed. So, and the Island fans they do come over a lot for the Whitecaps games. Oh, we have uh, over 100 season tickets from Victoria residents right now. We have people coming in from Nanaimo, from Campbell River. So we have great support from the Island. So it's the least we can do is get over there for for preseason. Jeff, thanks for doing this. Thank you. There we go. The pride of Mount Doug, Jordan, Jeff Mount, the owner of the Vancouver Whitecaps. We'll throw it back to you. It's tough not to trumpet the uh, accomplishments of your city's athletes when you boast the country's top college sports uh, programs. Um, the top junior football program and some of Canada's top amateur athletes. On Saturday, the 7th Annual Nanaimo Sport Achievement Awards highlighted another spectacular year in Harbour City sports. Myra Lawrence and I had the pleasure of presiding over festivities at the Coast Bastion Ballroom. Athletes were honoured in 15 different categories, including top male and female team athletes, which went to a couple of VIU Mariners, volleyball's Lindsay McLaughlin and baseball's Adam Palenku. The top individual athlete honours went to another guy named Adam. Adam Rahir is a Paralympic swimmer coming off a superb season that saw him strike for a gold and two silvers at the Pan Ams.
Bob, this award is a very big accomplishment because I've done so much travels, but I'm also proud to be nominated because I've done it just a year ago now, but I'm just very glad that any nominees just like me has participated in this one. I am honored that they have done their very best as well. Every day I'll be training as hard as I can until I've improved and ready for this great qualifying game. Best of luck to Adam. A few different sports on the docket this year. Jennifer Park competes in 10-pin bowling and did so for Canada at the Pan Am Games where she took home a silver medal. Park also bowled at the World Cup in South Africa, but competing wasn't even half the battle this year for her. She gave birth to her third child this summer, but just a week ago her father Robert passed away and this award was for him. He's the one that got me involved in bowling and um, he's the reason that I am here today. Um, in the sport and um, so uh, this this award does go to him because he has always believed in me and, um, and it's just a great cap off to, to a wonderful year that I've had. Congrats to all our finalists.